They were careless people. They smashed up things and creatures. And then retreated back into their money or their vast carelessness or whatever it was that kept them together and let other people clean up the mess they had made. F. Scott Fitzgerald, the Great Gatsby. And you know what's so interesting? This is the beginning, you know, the second page you open from Ask Not in reference to the Kennedys and the very first page for inconvenient women everywhere. And I don't know if men will understand this. I don't know if they will. I think the men that I know wouldn't understand this. So I guess that says a lot about the men that I've known. However, even men that I thought were good, just, you know, an inconvenience, you know, no use for you anymore. And anybody who gets into politics, and to me, it doesn't matter <laughs> if it's the, um, J.D. who wrote the Hillbilly Elegy as the VP uh, candidate for Trump, which seems absolutely incongruent to who he made himself out to be in the book. But at any rate, this just struck a chord. They were careless people. They smashed up things and creatures and then retreated back into their money or their vast carelessness or whatever it was that kept them together and let other people clean up the mess they had made. It just resonated so strongly with me. For anybody that's going to follow along with this book, Ask Not, The Kennedys and the Women They Destroyed, I'm just starting right from the author's note. So I'm not quite sure how I want to present the rest of the chapters. Do you want me to uh, hold it back and read and read along with me so you can see? Or would you like me to sort of tell the story? like read the important paragraphs and then explain it like a story and I can stand up and illustrate or, you know, make it a little more interesting. But I mean, words sometimes are more magical than what actually happened. Um, actually, that's not true. But words can describe feelings if you know how to write writing is a real craft and and there is a pattern to it or a, a format to writing but at any rate i'll read the author's note okay and this struck me too history to paraphrase the adage is typically told by the victors but what of the other side this book tells the stories of women whose lives were appended by Kennedy men, but whose collective history has never been captured in, I, was, I would say in totality, but in total. In my attempt to do so, I relied on methods common to nonfiction writers and historians years spent in archival research, original interviews conducted with surviving family members and friends, pre-existing biographies, memoirs, personal journals, journals, news reports, 
all informed that I believe are the closest, most accurate approximations of their thoughts and feelings. I would often ask those closest to these women, if my assessment sounded fair and only those agreed upon conclusions, those thoughts and reactions are the ones you will read here, even from the emotional fortress that was Jackie Kennedy Onassis shared her most intimate horrors with historians, relatives, and friends. What these women endured, I learned, is accessible if only one looks hard enough. My subjective, sorry, my subject, sorry, I believe no less or more than that of any other historian drawn to their subjects. And it's so true when you think about the history books. Who decides what to teach? When do you decide when to stop a certain part of history? Um, do we have to go back to the history of the dinosaurs and evolution? Because now years are piling on and on and on and people are still, um, you know, reading the Bible. That was the first great book ever written but it was written by men the prologue this book is not ideological or partisan it's about 13 women and a piece of american history hiding in plain sight kennedy men have been valorized and lionized for nearly a century but the women they've broken, tormented. Okay, they must be. None of this is history. As William Falker wrote, the past is never dead. It's not even past. The Kennedys remain a powerful and frequently destructive force in our politics and our culture. As the writing Robert F. Kennedy Jr., a prominent conspiracy theorist and anti-vaxxer who has made racist and anti-Semitic comments is running for president of the United States. He has raised tens and millions from big donors, almost all based on legacy. He remains unbothered and unquestioned about the circumstances leading to the of his second wife, Mary Richardson Kennedy in 2012, a fragile woman who he tormented toward the end of their marriage and in the lead up, cheating on her, cutting her off credit cards and access to cash, trying to forcibly hospitalize her, telling her she'd be, quote, better off. If he continues to smear her reputation, telling the press, in December 2023 that yes he had flown on the late whoops island man on the private plane not just once <laughs> okay um wow okay um he continues to smear his ex-wife's and who's passed, he continues to smear her reputation. <laughs> Honest to goodness, he continues to smear her reputation, telling the press in December 2023 that yes, he had flown on the late island, that yes, he had flown, okay, I've read that twice because I, I, I missed that part, and private plane not once as he previously claimed but twice and that was only because Mary had a relationship with J.E.'s chief procurer the convicted child K 
Ghislaine Maxwell. You're kidding. An assertion that um, several people who knew Mary well told me is impossible given her character, her mortality, and her devout Catholicism. RFK Jr. also incredibly has been given a huge pass for his fake accusation that that savage 1975 um, blank you know what um, I'm not going to be able to show the pages so the other video I actually had to reload again so I thought I would try it this way I think you will enjoy it much more the other way. But do you, you see what I'm saying here? Take a snapshot. Take a snapshot. I'm serious. It's not long. And we'll be getting through it today. Take a snapshot. And then we start with the icons. Carolyn Bassett. And this is exactly what I wanted to get to right away. So I'm just going to continue right here and then I'll reload the rest of the video after because my phone crashed. Okay. The minute she said yes, she regretted it. Now, who is Carolyn Bassett? Carolyn Bassett. Carolyn, um, it's going to explain it all here. So Lasha, just stay on point. The minute she said yes, she regretted it. Now we're talking about JFK Jr.'s, like so John F. Kennedy and Jackie Onassis, well their son JFK Jr. It's coming up on the 25th anniversary of that plane crash. So he would have been in his 35, 40, he'd be in his maybe late 50s now. Um, and and his wife and the sister. So that's who we're talking about. Okay, so the minute she said yes, Carolyn Bassett said yes, she regretted it. Carolyn could say that about so much of her life recently, but nothing felt quite like this. She was going against her gut, trying to keep her husband happy, really trying to keep up appearances. Their marriage, at its most tenuous, by agreeing to fly with him in the small plane he was still learning to pilot to a Kennedy wedding on the Cape. His flying was a point of pride for him and a fear for her. I don't trust him, Carolyn said to this, to family members, friends, the waitress at their favorite restaurant in Martha's Vineyard. She didn't think her husband had the patience, the diligence, the attention span, and really the humility to be a good pilot, to know when he shouldn't get in the air. He was still a student, but he had so much hubris. He didn't take his training seriously. He hadn't banked nearly the hours in the air, in the daylight, and at night, to pilot alone. He would break the rules, sneak into solo flights when he was supposed to have an instructor fly with him, but not one person abolished him or threatened to take away his training certificate. Nope, it was just because he was John Kennedy Jr., a rogue and rebel. Rogue and rebel like his father, risking his blood to fight safety academy, oh, to flight safety academy, the bravest people in aviation, John wrote to his instructors, because people will only care where I got my training if I crash. Huh. Really? John thought it was funny. Carolyn did not. Yeah, I agree with Carolyn. John, unlike Carolyn, thought there was no way he'd ever have any accident, even though he'd had a cast on his ankle for the past six weeks 
having broken it in a crash landing, a contraption called the flying lawnmower. He needed surgery on that ankle. John's doctor had just removed the cast that day. Okay. I am not sharing my thoughts. Cheer Denise reads books. She's fantastic. And she's going to share her, she shares her thoughts on every page. And that's why I love her. I'm trying to do something a little different. And when I get into this book, it will become more like a play. I can promise you. But isn't it fascinating to think that... We all thought that the Kennedys were just these amazing people. Really? Boy. I'll take my life any day. And you know also what I was going to say? Do you know why I think rich people? I was watching a movie with Michael Douglas and Sean Penn. Um, and it was called The Game. And basically, um, the character that Michael Douglas plays, he has everything in the world, financial everything. But he doesn't know how to attach to people. He's a stockbroker. So they do this whole game with him. And... At the end, he thinks he shot his brother, but he didn't. And I guess what I'm trying to tell you is, young people, we all grow older. When I was 46, that was only seven years ago. And time flies, so don't waste it. Don't waste it. And that is a wrap. For now, this is, I'm, wait till you see the next video, okay? Now remember, welcoming, respecting aspects of all people's societies. Let's keep it clean in the comments. I really want to know what you think. Um, Maureen Callahan is the author, and it's called Ask Not by Maureen. Oh, it's sorry. It's Callahan. Maureen Callahan. And she's always with Megan Kelly. And she's a fantastic journalist. You know, and it's beautiful today here in Beamsville. Just wanted to let you know. I love that tree. It's like right over my bedroom window. We don't own this house. We rent. But, um, and there's Sophie's little area. My bobbins is still asleep, so. Hi, do you wanna go say hi to Sophie? Okay, let's go say hi to Sophie. Trevor. Oh, there we go. I don't think you wanted to see that, but there we go. Oh, I, I'm just, this book is just amazing. Let's go check on Sophers. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, baby. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sweetie. Okay. Isn't she the cutest? Oh, she's shaking. Yeah, she's got to go pee.